Every day when I'm working with horses doing equine physical therapy, I also do a lot of saddle fitting. And probably the most common question I get is, how do I know if my saddle's fitting? Well, it's not just about the saddle or just about your pad, but it starts with your horse's conformation. So it doesn't make any difference what saddle, what rigging, what girth, what pad you have. If your horse's conformation is telling you something different, then you have to adjust for that. And you ask, well, what does that mean? And you've got to start by looking at your horse from the side. No two horses are made the same. And a lot of these little cow horse types like this horse can be built a little bit downhill. So your saddle's going to run downhill and you need a pad that's going to help balance that out. No tree in the world is going to fix that problem. And if you have a really high withered horse, you also need a saddle that's going to accommodate the horse in the gullet so that it doesn't sit on top of the wither. So step number one, you got to look at your horse and look at what you're working with. On this horse, he's uh, pretty flat backed and he doesn't have much withers and uh, he's a rainer and he runs downhill. So I've got to accommodate for that. His loin is higher than the point that the saddle bar is going to sit on him in the front. So the next thing you need to know is where the tree is going to sit on this horse, we want to keep the shoulder blade free. That is one of the most critical aspects of fitting a pad and a saddle to a horse, is keeping the saddle stable so that nothing is running into the shoulder blade. On this horse, his shoulder blade runs up here, and you can find the back side of the shoulder blade. You can run your fingers over the top here and find the bony part of the shoulder blade or the scapula and just keep feeling and tracing it till you get to the edge of that scapula cap and follow it down. So the edge of this horse's shoulder blade is right here. Now, when a horse is moving, that shoulder blade moves back and forth. So your saddle pad and saddle have to accommodate that too. When a horse takes a step forward, that shoulder blade moves way back. On this horse, it moved from here all the way to here. So if you're ending up with dry spots here and um, maybe some wrinkles or some roughed up hair, and if your horse is getting any white hair and palpate sore right in here, you may have a problem. Now, when you first go to grab a horse's back to see if they're sore anywhere, you've got to do it gentle and give them something to work with. You just start with a light pass and go down these back muscles because they have a nerve reflex right in here <coughs> that'll make them arch their back. It's just like tickling you in the side. So I just start light. I'm going to start right back here where the saddle might be getting in the way of this shoulder blade because this right here is one of the most common places for horses to get sore. And we want to protect that with our equipment. So I'm going to make a medium pass about 10 pounds of pressure. And now I'm going to use about 15 to 20 pounds of pressure. And he's not, he's not sore. The other way I'll check the shoulder blade for soreness is by coming on the opposite side and uh, running my fingers like this right here and pulling in and pulling up on those muscles. And I just rode this horse real hard yesterday, so that's, he, he's not sore. The next thing we want to consider then is if we know where our shoulder blade is and we've got an idea about how far that shoulder blade moves, then we'll look at how our saddle sits on our horse with no pad. And I will look at how the shape of that tree impacts the back. Do I have any bridging? I'm going to run my hand under that saddle. Is that tree sitting right on top of the shoulder blade? I want some room in there. If it's pinching, that's going to cause my horse to short stride in front and not use himself properly. So I'm going to grab a saddle here. These have two totally different trees in them. This one isn't particularly wide, um, but it's got a nice flare right here. And this horse kind of has a wide shoulder blade, but he narrows up behind it. And he's also lower there. And this saddle is um, a cow horse saddle, and it's also rigged in the full position. So on this horse, it's going to have a tendency to pull my saddle back. But I'll show you where I'd put this saddle.
Now, a lot of people just want to line the rigging up with where they think the girth is going to go. That doesn't work because riggings may be in the full, the seven eighths, the three quarters. You've got to look at where that rigging lines up on this horse. The further forward you're rigging, the more it's going to pull your saddle back. The further back the rigging, the more it's going to inch your saddle forward. So you might have a great tree, but if the rigging's in the wrong place for that horse, you're still going to have problems. But this is where I start. This horse has got a little bit of a long back. I like to keep my tree off my horse's shoulder blades, if at all possible. So on this horse right here, he's got his leg forward, so that means his shoulder blade is back. And I'm looking at it, and I've got plenty of clearance between the gullet and his withers. It's never going to hit on him. And when I look right here, the shape of the tree very closely matches the shape of this horse's back. And My rigging is lined up right here about where you think the girth should go. I don't have it cranked up here where the bars are sitting right on top of the shoulder blade. I've ooched this saddle back a little bit just to see where it's going to sit on its own because as soon as I start riding, that saddle is going to go wherever it wants to sit. And I can easily run my hand between his shoulder blade and the bar right through here and when I stick my hand up under here, it's just making nice, even contact the whole way. There's no gaps. It doesn't feel like it's going to pinch my finger. I'll set a lot of saddles on a horse's back just like this. And when I put my finger in here, there is so much pressure from the bar on the backside of the shoulder blade without even being cinched up, it, it's never going to work. And that can happen because it's too narrow. And it can also happen if the saddle is too wide and dropping down into the shoulder blade. I'm just going to simulate that by pretending the saddle is too wide. You can see I can't get my hand in there and I'm wrinkling the skin. That's what happens when horses get pinched. It's not just a pressure point, but it's a pressure point that soft tissue is moving back and forth against and creating a deep rub through several layers of tissue, skin, muscle, and connective tissue. So right here, I'm just going to ooch that back and when I look at it from the side with no pad, this saddle, the seat level is slightly downhill, so is my horse, and I've got enough room in here by the time I add a pad that I should be able to level this saddle out and have a nice level seat. So those are just some basic things I'm looking for. Now this is a very, very round-backed horse with no withers, so he, he fails my test, but on a nice withered horse, I like to be able to put my hand in the stirrup, no cinch, no pad, and be able to pull on this saddle and not have it come over. Actually, that's pretty good for this horse because he has, he's just round. Um, now I've got another saddle with another tree. Uh, this is by the same company, but a totally different tree, totally different rigging. It's a little wider than that one. And again, I'm going to set it up here. And I'm just going to ooch it back to where it wants to go. And I've got plenty of room again, plenty of room in the gullet, plenty of room to slide my hand up underneath here. This rigging is a little bit further back, so it's going to hold the saddle forward. This horse wants to shove all his saddles backwards so I picked another tree that had this rigging really somewhere between seven eighths and three quarters. It's in between. And um, that helps keep the saddle more towards his shoulders. It's always a balancing act. It's different for every horse. This one, we'll see, same deal. It still sits on him really nice, but he's so round. This is pretty good. I can put this much pressure in it. It's about 15 pounds of pressure before it wants to slide. Some horses, the tree fits them so good, you could get on with no cinch because it, it grabs so well. Um, the next thing I'm going to look at is my pad. How much is too thick? How much is too thin? You know, that's going to depend, too, on how much weight your horse is carrying at the time. So I've got different uh, pad thicknesses depending on if I'm showing and got a show blanket on it or if I'm just working or if my horse is up in weight or my horse is down in weight. My horse can change weight in a show weekend. 